Andrew Barry has done it again. He has found a way to feed his trade addiction without actually making a trade, but still playing a major role and influencing a blockbuster deal in the NFL that ultimately hurts his biggest rival, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brandon Ayuk, you are not a Steeler. And there are a lot of factors as to why Ayuk remained with the San Francisco 49ers. But I believe one of those factors is Andrew Barry and the Browns entering the mix and making things a little bit more difficult for the Steelers to get what they want. So if you didn't see the news already, let's just catch you up super quickly. Ayuk finally signed an extension. It's over. I'm very happy that we don't have to hear about it anymore. Four-year, $120 million deal, $30 million a season. So we're all, as a collective football family, happy that this saga is done. But the Steelers come out of this probably with their tail between their legs, and they can point to Andrew Barry as to why that is. So let's rewind a little bit. Adam Schefter was on the Pat McAfee show, and he shared what was pretty bombshell reports. And here's what he said. On Thursday, August 1st, I thought a trade to Cleveland was happening. It was imminent, and then it didn't get done. The holdup with Cleveland all along has been Brandon Ayuk's willingness to accept a trade to the Browns. Now, my first reaction to this is, if Ayuk doesn't want to come to the Browns because he just simply doesn't want to play for the Cleveland Browns or play in the city of Cleveland, whatever reasoning he has, his loss, really, his loss, he's going to miss out on something special happening in Northeast Ohio. And I don't need hostages. I need volunteers. I need foot soldiers. So I don't need a diva wide receiver. I'm very happy with the current receiver core as it is regardless. But first off, his loss by not coming to join the Browns. But I believe Andrew Barry played a role in preventing a Steelers 49ers Brandon Ayuk trade. And let me explain. When the Browns entered the mix for Brandon Ayuk and made a contract offer to Ayuk and his agent, that number was immediately going to be a starting point for any other team that's below him. Right? If the Browns offered Ayuk, let's say four years, 125. And the Steelers offered Ayuk four years, 115. Immediately, Ayuk's agent goes to Pittsburgh and says, listen, we got a better offer from the Browns, 125. Match it or you're out. And so clearly, Ayuk decided, you know what? I'll take the offer that I have for the 49ers all along at four years, 120. But Andrew Barry just getting in the mix just to drive the price up on the Pittsburgh Steelers make an offer to the 49ers that the 49ers would have accepted, but they wouldn't accept the Steelers? Well, all of a sudden, I Andrew Barry is now screwing over the Steelers in two ways, right? Ayuk's agent is going to Pittsburgh and saying, hey, we get this offer from Cleveland. Pony up. And then the 49ers call the Steelers and go, hey, we got a better trade compensation package from the Browns compared to you. They're willing to give us a player. Pony up some more. So, from both directions, Andrew Barry is screwing over the Pittsburgh Steelers. And once again, he finds himself in the middle of an NFL trade because we know he loves to trade. And even when he doesn't actually come on the receiving or the departing end or uh, on the giving end of a trade, he's still coming out a winner in my eyes. So more on this in just a second, but August is almost done. It is second to last day. And we are trailing the Ravens rundown at, at Chat Sports here in subscribers by a little under 10. We're not going to lose this one. Maybe this last month, not going to happen two in a row. Let's start the 2024 season off on the right foot. Take down the Ravens rundown in the walls of Chat Sports, and we'll ship pump them twice this season. Now, going back to the Brandon Ayuk saga, Jordan Schultz also after the fact reporting this. Ultimately, Brandon Ayuk could have gotten more money from the Patriots and Browns but wanted to remain with the 49ers and continue to build his legacy with the team that drafted him. This is what I'm talking about, right? The Browns offering more money than the 49ers for Brandon Ayuk. I mean, when you give a, when the team gives a player and his agent permission to seek a trade and the Browns, the Patriots, and the Steelers all make a contract offer to Ayuk, whoever makes the biggest offer, well, the agent's going to go to the other two teams and go, North, 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 because the Browns just gave us this much. And when the 49ers say we have a deal in place with the Browns, well, 
whatever trade compensation the Browns were willing to give, I mean, clearly the 49ers then turned to the, the Steelers and go, hey, this is what the Browns are willing to give us, pony up some more, making life further difficult for the Pittsburgh Steelers to get a deal done. If they keep getting popped by the Browns, and even if Ayuk doesn't want to go to the Browns, that's just going to drive the price up for what the agent and what the team want from Pittsburgh. And now the Steelers are left with this. Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin as your wide receiver two and wide receiver three. Now, I'm sure the Steelers' mantra this year would be to run the football, but their best running back is their backup, and he's injured right now, so that's not ideal. But still, at some point, you're going to find yourself in a position where you'll probably be trailing and need to move the ball down the field. And if a team removes George Pickens from the game with the double team, does anyone think Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin, I mean, their combined sub-300 yards last year, are going to be the difference maker in a close fourth-quarter battle? I don't think so. Yeah, the Browns, they don't get Ayuk either, but at least they've got Jerry, Judy, and Elijah Moore as the receivers two and three, who completely clown and dunk on the Pittsburgh Steelers receiving depth. The Browns receiver room runs circles around the Steelers receiving room. And I actually will go as far to say Jerry, Judy this year is going to have the best year of his NFL career. I feel like in Denver, early on, there was a combination of his own wrongdoings or his own shortcomings in terms of some drops some concentration issues they had constant current uh, constant quarterback turnover head coach turnover offensive coordinator turnover and then when they brought in Russell Wilson if you think about Russell Wilson's style of play he likes to hold on to the ball for a while extend plays takes a lot of sacks as a result of that but then look for the deep ball downfield or something really short that's not really Jerry Judy style, right? Jerry Judy is a speedy, elusive receiver who's going to win the route within the first two seconds of it, and that's when he needs the football. So it's up to Deshaun Watson and Ken Dorsey to accomplish that. So who do you think will have more wins this upcoming season? The Browns or the Steelers? I feel like Pittsburgh has been just treading water the last couple of years, leaning on their defense, getting them to above 500 with below 500 type of quarterback play, but I think this is the year it all catches up to them. Now, before we sign off, I got to show some love to the Brown and Orange Club. Tim Green, Jared Brandt, Mike Dibble, James Harper, Jeremy Stallman, Papa T, Slow Butcher, Joseph Deporte, David Botner, and Mike sending in $50 Super Chats during our watch parties. You'll get added to the club if you'd like with a $50 Super Chat this upcoming Sunday against the Cowboys. Also, I found this great Browns hoodie on sale at Fanatics, chatsports.com slash CLE hoodie. So if you want to get this hoodie 25% off before the fall really gets here, go use our exclusive link before this deal ends. Let's wrap up the show by picking a card. I've got producer Reed driving shotgun with me. Which uh, card do you want to go with? I'm going to go with King of Clubs. I'm going to go with the Nine of Diamonds. No. Six of Diamonds. Six of Diamonds. All right. That will do it for us on today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, give us a like, a comment, subscribe, all that great stuff, and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.